Cabinet ministers from the new independent West African state of Ghana were given an enthusiastic welcome when they arrived in Israel this month as members of an official government delegation to demonstrate the friendship between the two countries and to see for themselves how Israel is tackling the problems of development. They brought greetings to President Ben Svi. And they discussed with him and with Prime Minister Ben-Gurion matters common to Ghana and to Israel, how to revive a land, build up a free nation, and raise human standards. From General Moshe Dayan, they heard about the fighting and pioneering youth corps in the Israel army. They then went on a tour of the country, visiting agricultural settlements and factories. In the Haifa industrial area, they inspected the Shemin works, which manufactures edible oil products, soap and detergents, and showed great interest in the modern machinery and conditions of labor. They asked for, and were promised, experts from Israel to go out to Ghana to give guidance on the development of this new state. Visiting the Yuval Gad irrigation pipe factory in the northern Negev, was the delegation of the American Export-Import Bank who are considering an Israel request for a $75 million development loan. At the Chelitz oil fields, a comparatively new and expanding branch of Israel's developing economy, they saw a test drilling. And they also saw science brought to the aid of oil drilling. Equipment from the Weizmann Scientific Institute records soundings of underground explosions to determine the presence of oil. A guard of honor, including women soldiers, greeted the new Philippine minister to Israel when he called on the president in Jerusalem to present his credentials. Mrs. Golda Meir and senior officials of the foreign ministry were present. Governor Albert Chandler of Kentucky, on a visit here, presented the Prime Minister with a Venetian glass bowl. Mr. Ben-Gurion gave him a silver-bound Jerusalem Bible. The memorial to the 58 passengers of the El Al plane shot down by the Bulgarians two years ago was dedicated by a rabbi and by Christian priests this month. The victims, buried in a common grave, included both Jews and Gentiles. The government of Bulgaria continues to evade its responsibilities for the disaster. The French parliamentary delegation, which visited Israel this month, saw the chief of staff, General Moshe Dayan, take the salute at a passing out parade of army officer cadets. Jacques Soustel, the noted French statesman, headed the delegation. The World Congress on Jewish Studies, which opened in Jerusalem this month, was addressed by Prime Minister Ben-Gurion and by President Ben Svi. The delegates, who included outstanding scholars from all over the world, followed their study sessions with a tour of ancient biblical sites. Here, they are inspecting the archaeological excavations at the original spot where once stood the biblical city of Gath. Electric light and power are brought to the Arab village of Terra as part of the government program to raise the standards of the Arab community and introduce the amenities of modern life. A special ceremony is held to mark the great event and the Minister of the Interior is on hand to switch on the first electric light. 
Away into the closet go the now out-of-date oil lamps, which till now were the only illumination of the village. And the villagers can now listen to the radio in their own homes. A home and garden exhibition was held in Israel this month. On display were the products of Israel's fields and industrial plants, which can now satisfy all the requirements of home. Some products, like the wine from Israel's vineyards, are also exported to growing markets abroad. Locally made furniture of modern design offers comfort and beauty of line. Gas stoves and a wide range of kitchen appliances are now produced in Israel's factories. Israel's food industry has made great strides and dehydrated soups and canned goods are in great demand overseas. Hand looms for home weaving and the Mardik sewing machine are now made in Israel. Also on display at the exhibition were the handicrafts and souvenirs made by immigrants and distributed through Wietso. Gramophones and radio sets are also now manufactured both for the home and export markets. The exhibition was more than a window display of Israel's products. It was a report of Israel's progress towards economic self-sufficiency. A new broad highway was opened this month to offer easier and quicker access to Bat Yam, near the southern outskirts of Tel Aviv, where a new beach riviera has sprung up. Here, thousands of holidaymakers and after-work leisure seekers from ever-growing Tel Aviv and Jaffa find relaxation on the sand and in the cool waters of the Mediterranean. A new and exciting program of providing homes for new immigrants from various European countries in Kibbutzim, agricultural cooperative settlements like Gibat Chaim, Gan Shmuel and Ramat HaKovesh, has been launched by the government and the Jewish agency. The newcomers receive houses and jobs in established settlements and are welcomed as members of the family by the veteran pioneers. In one settlement this month, the immigrants were greeted by the Minister of Labor, Mordechai Namir, and received from Levi Eshkol, the Minister of Finance, the keys to their new homes. This is the type of house which is being specially built for them. The two cabinet ministers enter one of the new houses to inspect the furniture and interior decoration which is standard in the kibbutz housing for these new immigrants. Unhappy memories of past persecution quickly recede as the newcomers are drawn into the warm, friendly society of the kibbutz by the old settlers. These folk who have suffered much rarely feel that they have come home. This young woman is starting her first day in her new life. She goes to work in the food factory of the kibbutz, preparing diced melon for canning. All the fruit is grown right in the settlement. Another newcomer, formerly a writer, works in the poultry farm of the kibbutz, and he receives guidance from one of the old settlers. The orange groves offer work on the installation of an irrigation pipe. Again, the immigrant is helped and instructed by a veteran settler. It doesn't take long with loving guidance before they become proficient in their new labors. After work, they clean up and relax at home. Some spend time in the kibbutz reading room. 
The newspaper he takes is Omer, a paper for new immigrants, specially written in simple Hebrew. He gets oral practice in the new language in friendly conversation with the old settlers. Meanwhile, the children of the newcomers have a great time adapting themselves to their new life. Uh-oh, this eggplant is a bit unfamiliar, but this dish is more like the real thing. Storytelling in the new language is not easy at first, but they get the hang quickly. And then out in the open for healthy play under the sun. This young newcomer is a little reluctant, but he soon takes to the new life like a fish to water. Youngsters have had a busy day learning new things at the Kibbutz school and new sports with their new playmates. They don't look as if they've just come from a land of oppression. They look as if they are completely at home. And that's just where they are. Eka, the northern city on the Mediterranean coast, is the home of the school for young naval cadets. Here they learn seamanship, and it is here that the future officers of Israel's Navy are initiated into the mysteries of navigation, the handling of ships, and the principles of naval warfare. All look forward to their training spell at sea on board a warship with instruction from veteran sailors. Signaling is handled by the cadets themselves. All rush to action stations when there is a mock air attack. It's just as well that the planes are ours. The youngsters are given a chance of firing the torpedo. And since anything can happen in battle, they learn how to abandon a ship that has been hit, moving off in rubber dinghies or keeping afloat in May Wests. A sister vessel races to their rescue. How to move wounded from one ship to another while both are speeding through the water is one of the adventurous high spots in the training of these young cadets. Well, it was tough, but they've all had an instructive time and are that much nearer to becoming full-fledged officers in the Israel Navy. Now they can relax on deck and swap the yarns of old men of the sea. Among the first visitors to arrive for Israel's 10th anniversary celebrations were Mr. Isaac Wolfson, the British industrialist and benefactor, and a distinguished delegation of British friends. They came to inaugurate the new Supreme Rabbinical Center in Jerusalem, built largely through Mr. Wolfson's generosity in memory of his parents. The chief rabbis of Israel head the representative gathering and the dedication ceremony which was also attended by leaders of other religious faiths.
Chief Rabbi Herzog stressed the significance of this new religious center in the capital of Israel and paid tribute to Mr. Isaac Wolfson, its patron. The former Prime Minister of Japan, Mr. Hitoshi Ashida, also toured Israel this month and had talks with Foreign Minister Mrs. Golda Meir. A Jewish National Fund delegation, including Christian friends from Finland, came specially to Israel to congratulate President Ben Svi on Israel's 10th anniversary and to present him with an illustrated album for the occasion. Also this month, the first Colombian minister to Israel, Dr. Franco Ortega, presented his letters of credence to the president in Jerusalem. Dancing in the streets of Tel Aviv is a group of South African folk dancers who, on their way to perform at the Brussels exhibition, stopped off for a brief trip round Israel and interspersed their sightseeing by offering Israelis a sight for them to see. On the 10th anniversary of the death of Blanche Dugdale, niece and biographer of Lord Balfour, hundreds of her friends from England and Israel, headed by Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion, paid homage to her memory at a Jewish National Fund ceremony in the heart of the Balfour Forest in the Galilee. Blanche Dugdale's daughter, Lady Ferguson, unveiled the memorial. The planting of the Jewish National Fund Independence Forest, the gift of British Jury, was marked by a ceremony attended by British Ambassador Sir Francis Rundle and Foreign Minister Mrs. Golda Meir. In the Galilee, a forest was planted in honor of Monsieur Pierre Gilbert, France's popular ambassador to Israel. He planted the first sapling received the dedication scroll and responded with an address in fluent classical Hebrew. The status and welfare of Arab women in Israel, far beyond the level of their sisters in the rest of the Middle East, is the subject of this conference of Arab women convened by the Women's Workers' Council of Israel. Catering to the religious needs of all faiths is the constant concern of the government and this mosque in Haifa, serving the local Muslim community, has been renovated and improved out of public funds. The great mosque of the Mediterranean city of Akka has been treated to similar improvements. And in Jaffa too, there was a ceremony marking the renovation of the beautified house of Muslim worship. As part of the program to improve the social services in rural communities, the Arab village of Jaljulia was able to celebrate this month the blessing of electric light and power. In a nearby Arab village, a new health centre was dedicated to serve the needs of the surrounding area. Minister of Health Mr. Barzilai was present and visited the new clinic and hospital after the ceremony. The minister attended a similar occasion this month in yet another Arab village, Baka El Garbia, where he opened another new health center.
the traditional Depka folk dancing was a feature of the parties celebrating these modern social services. Dancing was followed by the gay display of fireworks. Among the Bedouin in the south, the celebrations take the form of the Fantasia, with dramatic and exciting horse and camel racing in the best desert tradition. Bedouin Sheikh receives a present of a beautiful rug from his Jewish friends, woven by Jewish immigrants from the Yemen. The new campus of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem was officially opened this month at a ceremony held in its new amphitheater in the presence of a distinguished gathering of statesmen, diplomats and scholars. The buildings are new, but not the university, which flourished in its original home on Mount Scopus until Israel's War of Independence. Under the Armistice Agreement, Israel was to enjoy free access to and normal use of its university and hospital on Scopus. But so far, Jordan has refused to comply with her obligations. It is hoped that through the United Nations, Jordan will be brought to respect the Armistice Agreement so that the original buildings of both university and hospital may once again serve the Israel public. And these new buildings of the new campus would then form an additional university complex to meet the growing Israel needs for advanced learning. All faculties are represented, the arts, humanities, the social sciences, law, Jewish studies, and of course, the natural sciences. More and more students, like these, go in for physics, the most exciting scientific subject of the modern age. Students comprise both those born in Israel and young immigrants from scores of countries. They include both refugees from Arab lands and youngsters from Poland, immigrants from North Africa and from the United States. All find a common link in their presence in Israel and their desire for advanced study. The laboratories are well equipped for practical work. Equipment includes this large spectroscope used in atomic research. And this newly installed cyclotron, the only one in the Middle East. After the dedication ceremony, Shai Agnon, the great Hebrew writer, Nobel Prize winner Professor Waxman, and President of the State Yitzhak Ben Svi, received honorary doctorates from the university. At night, the new buildings wore their party dress. A few days later, the new center of nuclear physics of the Weizmann Institute of Science was opened before a gathering of the world's leading scientists. They heard Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion urge the need to combine the spiritual values taught by the Hebrew prophets with the discoveries of modern science. And they heard the great American atomic physicist Robert Oppenheimer pay tribute to Israel science and to Israel, and also to the greatest physicist of all, Niels Bohr, who had come specially for the occasion. Head of the nuclear center is young Professor de Chalit. At the agricultural youth village of Ramat Hadassah, the youngsters get the treat of their lives when the president of the state arrives to open a new hostel and a new synagogue. The party, carrying scrolls of the law, the Torah, move towards the synagogue. The president makes the traditional blessing over the new house. The 
boys conduct their own prayer services. In another youth village, the cornerstone is laid for a youth hostel in the name of Anna Frank. In Jerusalem, the president and his wife give a party for a group of new immigrant children who were unable in the country of their birth to be brought up in the Jewish tradition. Each child is given a Hebrew Bible, and now that they will be hearing Hebrew all the time, it won't take them long to master. The Jewish festival of the first fruits, Shavuot, is celebrated by the youngsters of this youth village of Hadassim as it may well have been celebrated in olden times. Magen is a cooperative farm settlement on the border whose young pioneers work the land while maintaining constant vigilance against possible attack. They are having a party to mark their 10th birthday. They founded their settlement in the midst of the War of Independence. Their parents have come to help them celebrate. They have had a tough but exciting 10 years and they have something creative to show for it they can afford to dance. 